How's it going, people? Welcome, welcome to this week's episode of The Locker Room right here on Top 6 Fan TV. It's a packed house, uh, as you can see, and we are enjoying, uh, you know, the, 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 the camaraderie here so far. Uh, but I'm sure it's going to get nasty as we go along, of course, in a friendly way. We have a Man United guy, a Liverpool guy, and an Arsenal guy here. Um, two Arsenal guys. Uh, and I'm sure we will enjoy the rest of the show. So um, we'll get right into it after this. Oh, he's got it! Come the deal! Come the man! And it's that one by the young. It's eight goals in his last eight Premier League starts at Emirates Stadium. Salah! What a strike by Mohamed Salah. The ball down the channel, and it's played into Fernandez in the penalty area. Oh. Aguero, looking for the Here's Harry Kane. Kane goes for oh, What a goal from Hull. In business in, yeah. scores on second debut. It's only taken 14 minutes. Brilliant, brilliant. Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining us, welcome to the virtual studio, gentlemen, and welcome people, ladies, gentlemen, and whoever else is watching to the locker room right here on Top 6 Fan TV. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the like, bite, but, hit the like button, and I'm sure you will have a fantastic ride. Joining us today in the virtual studio is Mr. Ian, first timer on uh, the locker room right here on Top 6 Fan TV. Ian Man United fan from Kigali, Rwanda. You are welcome. Say what's up. Hi, guys. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be part of the show. Uh, I'm Ian. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, resident Liverpool noisemaker, Mr. J.N. Kajimba, Jonah K, as others like to call him. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Brilliant. And my fellow Silas Ghana, although we did win at the weekend, Mr. Akram, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Hi, Top 6 fans and all Arsenal fans and Man United, Liverpool and the rest of the Top 6. It's always a pleasure being here. Brilliant. And we will kick off the action on what has been an interesting weekend of activity uh, you know, involving the Top 6 Lots of penalties, and uh, you know, I did call it uh, as a title of, the, of, of today's episode. You know, a penalty weekend. Lots of activity, lots of penalties being given. A lot of the big boys winning by penalties, and we'll kick off the action in Norwich, where Man United, uh, who arguably have been surviving off penalties for the last ten years, kicked off the action with a one nil, <laughs> one nil win. Cristiano Ronaldo. Who else? Who else? The old broom coming in uh, to score that uh, penalty kick. Controversial one, actually. Ian, what was your take on the game, man? Well, to be honest, I wasn't expecting a lot. Of course, with the, with the new manager coming in, uh, with Ralph coming in, I still feel uh, it's going to take a lot of time, you know, for uh, for the players, uh, for the for the club to kind of adapt to his philosophy, to his uh, to his way of work. Uh, but even with that said, I felt you know the team was a little bit sluggish. I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's the it's the hangover of of all his uh, all his regime. But uh, everything was uh, players didn't seem as fast in transition. They looked very slow in their decision making, and of course a lot of the decision making that was made in the final third uh, was short of quality. And it's uh, it's really unfortunate that we had to wait uh, for uh, for a penalty decision to kind of decide the game, uh, because you imagine that uh, players of that quality, of that talent, should be able to uh, bury away you know easy chances against you know uh, opposition of uh, of Norwich's nature. So I was really uh, I was a bit disappointed. Uh, but I believe there is a plan this time. There is something uh, in place. You can see, you can see what Ralph Rangnick wants wants to achieve. You know, with the four two 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 formation, uh, it's also a surprise that you know uh, players uh, like Fred are actually thriving in this system. 
So um, I'm not so excited, but uh, I'm looking forward, you know, to uh, how things will pan out in the, the next couple of months uh, during his interim um, uh, tenure. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I think United have made a habit uh, more, more more so than the rest of the other top six of, of winning games uh, through dubious penalties. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, you did see that against us, right? The same chap, Jonah. What's your take on that? I mean, let's uh, uh, let's let's yeah. dissect this man. You know, you know, like uh, after we won our game with a penalty, and I'm sure we'll get right. into the Liverpool game later. Uh, I was on mm. Twitter, and I saw a guy mm. that came and commented, a United fan. He commented mm. to a Liverpool guy saying, uh, "Oh, you guys always lucky with penalties," and da 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 da. And the Liverpool guy replied and said. I bet you're going to win your game with one penalty to Norwich. <laughs> like this guy is Nostradamus. He's Nostradamus. Like he predicted, <laughs> said you're winning by one goal and to be a penalty. And now I, thought, no, I was in many penalties, man. I was invested in the game, so I watched it and I couldn't believe. But uh, I agree mm. with Ian. Mm. If you watch the two games which I have, because I'm invested in hating on United, so I watch their games. Uh, the two <laughs> games of Rob Radnick. In the first. 20 minutes, United are very intense and playing some mm -hmm. very electric football. But yeah. it, it takes a while for players to adjust to a new system. You're coming from yeah. the oldest system, and even the previous systems, right? Even Mourinho mm. wasn't a coach that makes uh, guys press. So you're coming mm. from two systems where you could just rely on individual brilliance. There's no team cohesion in terms of we press as a team, we fall back as a team if guys are taking us. And now you're trying to see it coming. But it's only been two games. But you can see it in the first yeah. 20 minutes. Then, as a friend of mine likes to say, the controller gets disconnected. And now know it's <laughs> what you like, But, no, but, if, but if you can jump in. You, yeah, like, you need to plug in plug batteries in the controller, man. Like, know could have easily <laughs> won that game. Yeah. Was it a fair penalty? I think so. I think it was a stupid foul by the Norwich defender. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a clear penalty, but yeah, I can't complain about penalties this weekend. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, you're trying to say something about that. Yes. So uh, what I was saying is that as much as uh, I am optimistic, you know, about you know the new dawn, a new manager coming in, I still have my reservations, you know, about of course the period uh, it takes for players to kind of to uh, adapt to the system. Because uh, Rangnick has been given six months, you know, in his interim role. And I think you remember uh, Klopp's debut season. Mm. It took, I think, uh, I, I think it took players, I think about a season or two to kind of, you know, get the rhythm of the Gegen press. I remember so many players, even, even the fittest, like James Milner, always out, injured, you know, pulling hamstrings left and right and center. So... I'm not so sure. I, I, I don't know how long it's going yeah, to take. Uh, let, let me just tap really on that very quickly. This can yeah. actually happen soon later. Otherwise, I can only be optimistic. Yeah. Brilliant. Go, go ahead, Jonathan. Let you were reacting to that. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what Ian said is very true. Like, and uh, there's something mm -hmm. Gary Neville said. And Gary was one of the biggest Ole supporters. We all know that. But yeah. Gary uh, said something very important on his podcast when he said one thing you will notice with Klopp and even uh, Tuko at Chelsea is they came in, they implemented their systems and it's like they force the system on players. And whoever can right. cut it, cuts it. Whoever can't, you're gone. You're gone. Mm. And Tuko is a bit even harsher than Klopp. Mm. He's a bit mm. more sentimental. And I would like yeah. to think even Ralph Ragnick is the same. Like he's going to implement his system uh, already, we're seeing some victims to it. I don't think Juan Bisaka will make it. I, I yeah. don't think he's uh, that kind of player. And there'll be other Martial. victims to the system. Mm -hmm. uh, Kabisa, he won't survive. Uh, Fred mm -hmm. will be one of the winners in the system, and we're already seeing that as well. Yeah. So, players, uh, sorry, coaches who have systems that are well oiled and they know what they're what they're trying to implement will always weed out the weak. And we're going to see that right. at United very soon. Yeah, really. That's true. Uh, with, uh, with Jonah. Akram, do you think uh, United had um, a fair call for a penalty there? Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there we go. He had a. I think he has some connectivity issues. He'll join us back later. Yeah, but anyways, we'll have to leave all things uh, united there and move yeah. on to the Emirates, where unfortunately Akram has jumped off, but uh, probably when he gets back. Uh, we did have more of a, uh, an encouraging result in there. Uh, but, you know, obviously all eyes on this gentleman right here, Mr. Uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who was actually missing from the game. And um, surprisingly, or rather unsurprisingly, um, if you consider the last few games, uh, the Arsenal did suffer without him, coming out 3-0 winners against Southampton, who have been a decent side uh, in the last few, um, the last last few, last, last well, say last 10 games, more, more or less. Um, they've been a decent side. But Arsenal coming out 3-0 winners, a uh, resounding victory for them, some would say expected. But Arsenal of late, uh, we know, um, they're, they're, you know, it's, it's like shooting birds in the sky. Um, you, you never know whether you're going to, you know, you, whether you're going to hit something. Akra, what were your thoughts around that game? Um, you know, Arsenal's game at um, at the Emirates, hosting Southampton. Goals coming in from Lacazette, Alexandre Lacazette. Fantastic team move. Uh, shades of Wenger ball in there. And then goals from Martin Odegaard, who's now scored three and three. Um, you know, and then being rounded off by Gabriel, uh, our star defender, I'd say. So it was a great victory. What were your thoughts around that? And um, particularly also Obama Yang. Um, for me, the game went as far as I expected it to go. Southampton has been struggling. One of the bottom teams, one of the teams I feel like that could get relegated this year. So I expected Arsenal to win by at least three three goals, four goals, five goals. Yeah, but uh, knowing our team and knowing how we've been playing, I didn't expect us to put a really good performance, which we actually didn't put up. Like, we just scored goals, but I would really struggle to pinpoint moments in that game, moment of brilliance in that game that, you know, that uh, show anything to do with the Arsenal tradition or the brilliance that of the players that we have. Uh, as for Aboumiang, Aboumiang has had a really rough, rough season. I think it's one and a, must be one and a half years that he's really struggling. And now reading in the papers and getting to see that it's somehow associated with discipline and uh, lack of goals and missing any chances, uh, I really feel for the guy because I, I feel like he's the best player we have in our team. Like everyone that we have around, I feel like he's the best that we have, and I feel like he has been uh, uh, he has been uh, affected by the style of play of the manager that we have right now and the lack of confidence. Because you you can really look at the players around him and you will struggle to to name one or two names that have really improved in the last one and a half years. Look at Lacazette. Lacazette has struggled like since the Wenger days. He's a we we. We, we signed him for about 56 million and the guy hasn't even netted 15 goals. The only time he has come close is 14, of which he has netted like seven or eight goals in the last one to three matches where we are not chasing anything. <laughs> and Abumia has been the only player in our team that has really showed that he's world class and he wants the team to go into Champions League. And I, I feel like the last one and a half one and a half years of his career, I would I would blame it on mainly the manager and the player. But, uh, but Akram, Akram, let me just let me just interject there as a fellow Arsenal fan, and I can see hands are going up there. Ian has some uh, you know uh, some hot responses. Jonah as well. But I, I mean, and I, 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 are you not being very sentimental as an Arsenal fan? I know Obama has carried the team. Uh, you could argue, you know, the impact of the manager's tactics, which to some degree, I would say, yes, maybe here and there. But this is a guy who carried Arsenal to the FA Cup, uh, you know, more or less carried the team to the FA Cup final. And as soon as he signed that contract, uh, the small um, uh, disease called Ozil that checked in. So I don't know what happened. But, you know, I'll just kick off with Ian. What, what are your thoughts? I mean, you're burning, and then we'll move on to Jonah on that. 
So, yeah, I was about to say, first of all, I think when he signed that contract, it's like Jonah. When Jonah got money, he disappeared. I haven't seen him in there. <laughs> I haven't seen him in so long. Eh? He got money and disappeared. So I don't know. I don't know how how the contract renewal kind of affected his performances. Mm. But I'm going to say something really controversial. I think I would I prefer Lacazette's attitude um, to to Aubameyang's because uh, uh -huh. I've seen him on the pitch. Maybe his output, his output has, uh, has is suspect, is very questionable. But uh -huh. man, this guy throws his body, he throws his body on the ground. You can see him trying, you know, trying to make things happen. Uh -huh. um, but maybe the output doesn't really relay um, uh, his, his hard work. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, I still believe he should be doing more. Uh, in in mm. body language, in his leadership, I've never, never seen him. He's the talisman, yes, but I've never seen him, you know, assert himself. Sometimes, you know, in, in games or kind of inspire, uh, you know, his right. troop you know, to kind of, you know, to kind of um, go for games. Yeah. So he should be doing M more. much, much in the same way uh, Sanchez used to. You remember, uh, Sanchez used to grab the game by the scruff of the neck, right? I'm sure yes, that's what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. You should be yeah. doing that and yeah. not yeah. doing can that. I, can I interject there? Hmm? Yeah. You <laughs> see, Abumiang, Ab Abumiang is the kind of striker you're not going to expect to track back or maybe mm. get so much involved in tackles in a game. That's yeah. it. That's his game. Go way yeah. back from the time he's in Dortmund, you'll never see Abumiang come to defend a corner. He, they, they, there's that rare breed of strikers that will give you 20 plus goals and yes, you won't see them going into okay. tackle. Now, when you see Lacazette, Lacazette is not that kind of player and it's not like he's so involved in the game. For Lacazette, it's the lack of game, it's the lack of goals that actually makes him now want to get involved to make it look like, you know, he's so busy in the <laughs> field. So he's a terrible striker, to be honest. Lacazette is a very <laughs> terrible striker. The, the lack of goals make him get involved in the game. You see him coming back in midfield to pick the goals, and yet even he cannot create assists. You you will be shocked to to, to learn that Aubameyang has more assists in Arsenal than what Lacazette has provided, and yet Lacazette makes it look like you know. In our language, we call it okay for a busy. Eh? For a busy, <laughs> yet the output is zero. Now, Adeta, Adeta is trying to is trying Adeta is trying to make Obamiang play mm. play play that line on the left from the full back, you know. Yeah. It, it somehow worked last season towards the end of the pandemic season where he would he would cut in on the left and then go in and then somehow curve the ball inside the net. We, we yeah. were lucky, but then the moment defenders realize this is his strongest point, so now there's a way they defend him and he cannot call those balls anymore. Now, Aubameyang is a number nine. Just feed him the balls and he will score goals. Mm. Yeah. Well, what is that happening? Um, that, that isn't happening of late. Uh, I'll let Jonah come in now. Wow. Yeah, I want Maybe to... Maybe you can give some advice from Salah. Two things, two things. I want to agree with Akram, but again disagree. Let me first state my mm. agreement, and this is Oba. Mm. Is Oba uh, Akram? You said Oba is the best player in Arsenal. I would say Oba is, te like technically, yes, he is the best player. Like he, in terms of pure quality, he's the best player. No one doubts that. Right. Um, I also agree with your point of the system may be affecting him. They want him to be a I mean, today almost every player, even Ronaldo, gets criticized for the same thing. He doesn't track back, da 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 da. But again, when I say today, football has changed. We no longer have the Vanistrains of those days. Me, I will wait and score. Now everyone has to pitch in in terms of defense. Everyone, all those old school players who just uh, wait for wait to score are being are being phased out. They are being phased out. But the thing about a Ronaldo type is obviously Ronaldo is on another level compared to Oba. And he can get that leeway of, yeah, let him, let's just wait for him to score and do his thing. But Oba and Ronaldo's attitude is actually very good. Oba's attitude is very questionable. It's questionable off the pitch. It's questionable as a captain. 
If you see his uh, social media activities, the man is just in Lamborghinis. He's there supporting Hamilton. He seems so unconcerned. Like, as liking Cristiano Ronaldo posts. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. Like you're a captain. Can you imagine Henderson going and liking uh, Maguire's post? It's impossible. And they even teammates on England. But uh, let's not go too far. Uh, yes, I, I, as much as I'm a big fan of Lacazette, I do agree that he makes himself too busy, but he's not really doing much. I'll bring on my own player, <laughs> Firmino. Firmino also doesn't pull the goals that much, but it's mm. unquestionable what he actually brings to the team. That one, you can really mm. see it. Like I said, he's a busybody. He's one. He'll quarrel with the ref. He'll fight players. And you feel he's doing something. But if you really think yeah. about it, like, what is it? Now, what, what, in conclusion, what I would say is if I was a teta, I would build my team around none of those two guys. Those guys are both old. I would look at the Smith Rose, Sutters, Nellies, and say, fine, we're a mid-table team. Let's build around these guys. The pressure of trying yo, to involve... Yo, yo, yo. And... What's up with that mid-table arrangement, man? <laughs> let's, let's pause right it's there. It's true, man. You have, you have to start somewhere. You have to start now somewhere. Like, first allow your own thing. You get your Smith Rose, <laughs> yeah, your yeah, yeah. Nellies, and say, this is us now. Let's build around these guys. Because if you keep trying to evolve, a, uh, how old is Obi? Like 32? He's not even that old. But the man That's seems him. so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, has, he has run his socks off. I mean, fair points right there. Uh, Ian, you have, you, have, you have another contribution. Yes, all I'm saying is that Aubameyang's uh, Obam, um, contribution can't be written off. I think he's still very valuable to the team. You can see his stats. His stats, are, his stats are very visible to everyone. This is a guy who gets the goals. Uh, the attitude thing can always be corrected. I think it's a, I think it's a managerial thing. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Ateta is, is telling him, but I believe this can be corrected, to be honest. But uh, in, in as far as leadership is concerned, I feel this guy should really pull his weight. Uh, two disciplinary um, incidents. Yeah. No, no that, that, is, that is a bit too much for a guy yeah. of his caliber. So I think Ateta should have a, a strong conversation and tell him, man, you can't keep going on like this. Yeah, yeah man. For, I, I mean, I, I have to agree with you here and there. And Akram, I'll bring you into closer. Uh, uh, Arsenal discussion, but for me, um, you know, they, they, there's lots of dynamics around the situation. Some fans uh, saying, you know, Wenger shouldn't have. I mean, uh, sorry, excuse Wenger. Arteta uh, shouldn't have come out in public with this. He should have managed it at the back. Maybe said he's just missing and and you know recovering from an injury or something like that, and then try to discipline him behind the doors. But I think for once, I although I've been an Arteta. Um, you know, I've been on, rather on the fence, right, with Atenta. Uh, you know, he's, he's yet to convince me fully. He needs some consistency to be able to convince me. I can see what he's doing. But with Obama, uh, this whole bit around non-negotiables on discipline, that's like Ian said, that's, that's two discipline issues. Last year, he came late. Um, you know, he just arrived, rocked up late on the day of the North London Derby. Who does that? Tottenham. Can you imagine, uh, you know, uh, a player rocking up late, more Salah rocking up late on the day you're, you're facing Man United. Like, it doesn't happen that way, man. <laughs> it doesn't. And, you know, he got, he got, you know, got into disciplinary issues for that. This time around, there's a bit of confusion there, but, you know, did he, he came late uh, from, you know, he got permission to go pick up his mom and then came late. Uh, there's that story. There's another story of him, uh, you know, pre Boring, getting that time off to go and have a tattoo done eh? and then coming back late. But I mean, these are not good examples for the young guys, right? The squad, it's the youngest squad in the premiership, by the way, at the moment. So you have these guys looking up and saying, if this guy can get away with sorting out a tattoo during the week and he falls in, uh, how about me? So I think I support the disciplinary action. I think he should be stripped of the captaincy. I know that's a bit extreme and um, during the season it could be uh, counterproductive. Probably they'll strip him of the captaincy at the end of the season. But I don't think beyond the season, this guy is the right example. You, I mean, you can't have the likes of Gabriel, the likes of Tierney on the pitch, 
Um, I don't even want to mention Granny Jaka in there, but, but I mean there are other guys around him who can. Yeah, Akram is. is, is <laughs> Akram doesn't even want to hear Granny Jaka's name. Is <laughs> it, is is what we have, unfortunately, Jaka Boom, and, and unfortunately Liverpool is not taking the guy on loan, so we we have to we have to deal with this guy. So uh, yeah, for me, for me, Obama Yang, I think has lost the plot. If we can get rid of him. Um, we brought in a lot of players as Arsenal this summer um, who have settled, and you've seen that he's starting to build his team. Um, he just needs the consistency in there um, to, to, to go with it. We saw, like you mentioned, Jonah, I think was it Jonah who mentioned, mentioned uh, uh, Klopp had to take like two years to get his team. If you look at the first team, first squad he played with over the first two seasons, I think it's only um, Milner and Origi who are surviving. Out of like 15 players. So you can imagine the kind of rebuild. Arsenal are going through the same thing, but uh, nevertheless, this, this summer is going to be all about the striking and uh, parts of the midfield. The defence, I believe, is, is, is sorted. But Akram, your last take on Arsenal, should Obama be stripped? Was he, uh, was Ateta right to, uh, to, you know, to, 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 to give him that kind of punishment? Uh, puni well, I don't say pun punishment, but uh, disciplinary action subject him to it. The guy must be slashing somewhere, the London corny for, for all I know, mm -hmm. man. Uh, you know, was he, was he, was Ateta right? And uh, what do you think is the way forward for Obama? Yeah? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I think Obama is a terrible captain. I think he's not a good captain and he shouldn't have been given that amber. I feel mm -hmm. like he's more of a, he's more of a fun guy in the dressing room. He's not the kind of guy that will bring the team to, you know, like we need to win this game. Like, Mentally, mm. I don't think he's he's a mentally able captain. Uh, secondly, mm. about the disciplinary issue, I think that's an issue we need to really dig deep into. Adeta has been <laughs> in this club for two years, and he's mm. had discipline issues with over eight players in just mm. two years. Saliba, mm. you remember? There is Gwendozi. Remember? There is mm. Ozil. We had uh, the issue with uh, this Chelsea guy, uh, David Lewis. Remember mm. that? Uh, we mm. had uh, some issues with, uh, you, you know, with uh, Maitland Niles. Mm. The, the guy has been here for less than two, in just two years, and he's clashing with almost every player, you know? And then remember, uh, this is a rookie manager. He has never managed any team. So we could, be, we could be calling these players in discipline, but maybe they are calling out a player for being naive and maybe not understanding what is coaching and that is termed as being in this play. Look at o o o o Aubameyang's attitude could be zeroed down to maybe not thinking Ateta is, 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 is really the man that should be coaching this team and maybe he gets frustrated at how you know. And I, I so what, what language should he use? In training? No, not the language. Not the language, but <laughs> look. I was talking to Arsenal, uh, Arsenal fans recently, uh, and, uh, and I was telling them, Ateta hasn't just started missing chances. Ateta has missed mm -hmm. chances. Mm -hmm. You go back to Dortmund and see Ateta would miss four or five chances, but he's oh, the kind of player that would... Young, right? Rather, Aubameyang, not Ateta. Yeah. Aubameyang mm -hmm. would miss four or five chances, but he's the kind of player that would score two after missing one to three chances. Now, mm. it so happens now in Arsenal that his chances are so highlighted because he receives few chances. The guy gets mm. two clear chances in five games and misses them. In Wenger's and Emery season, the guy would get four chances and score two and miss two. Remember, re remember that the penalty he missed against uh, Tottenham in the last minutes? Do you remember it? Mm. And then we were all furious. He said, North London, Derby, he has missed the penalty. The next game, the guy scored a brace. The next yes. game is called a hat trick. You know, like we could forget. Now, right now they are highlighted because the man only receives two chances every five games. And this is down to the way the manager is setting up this team. We score one goal, pack the bus. You yeah, so I hear you, Akram. Akram, I probably, hear you. I think probably I will, when Obamian uh, goes back to the training ground, you know, he has this yeah. attitude. What exactly are we playing? For, for goodness sake, I'm 32. I have two, three years of my career. He wants supply. Yes, he wants supply. And maybe... And there's no supply. Getting, yes. For the indiscipline case, I really think Ateta has issues with player management. And it has nothing to do yes. with our players being indiscipline. I think he's the kind of person that doesn't want to be told 
he's a kind of person that has showed this place either my way or you or you out and on the highway mm. yes so I, I i'm really not convinced into this process ateta's process and mm. all and i really i even think you could sign salah and ateta and he would struggle to score nine goals trust me well that is a damning verdict there of the situation mm. at Arsenal. And I'll have to leave it at that. Jonah is enjoying it. And uh, you can see mm-hmm. Ian, of course, as well, enjoying it. But we will move to uh, Liverpool, Anfield over the weekend. Fantastic atmosphere. The legendary captain, Steven Gerrard, returning with an Aston Villa side that is on the up. And uh, it was a penalty, again, that actually concluded the game. 1-0. To Liverpool, no one else that than uh, no one else but Mohamed Salah getting uh, on the score sheet there, taking that penalty. Jonah, what was your take on the game? And uh, um, you know, especially you know, what did Steven Gerrard bring to that atmosphere? You could see it was it was not a normal atmosphere within Anfield. Eh? I think at some point the the cop were actually they forgot that they were, they were playing against opposition and started singing Steven Gerrard's name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nostalgia. Actually, from the from the get go, as soon as he walked on, they gave him a mm. an ovation. Then even uh, somewhere during the game, when it was still zero zero, maybe like uh, the fiftieth minute or something, they started singing his right. songs. And mm. I won't lie, man, I was like enjoying it a bit. Like there's a part of me that's enjoying it, yet I'm struggling to win. But it was a tough game, and I mm. I expected it to be tough. Aston Villa have been a problem. Man City uh, beat them, but it was 2 1. It wasn't very convincing. Um, mm. other than, actually, Gerard has only lost two games Man City and Liverpool. The rest he has won. He beat Palace. Yeah. I can't remember the other team he beat, but he's actually, you can really see the, the immediate impact he has had. And I thought it was mm. a bit tough. Uh, the penalty, in my opinion, the Salah penalty, was a bit mm-hmm. soft, but. Right. It was very naive of uh, uh, Tyron Mings. Like Salah played him. Salah played him, mm. he ran fast, and he created it. He created that penalty. But it happens. We've right. seen it in the Chelsea game as well with Rudiger. Uh, if, if you're naive enough uh, and someone knows what they're doing, they'll get a penalty out of you. That's mm, mm, mm. true. Ian, what was your reaction to that? Was the penalty deserved? Uh, did Liverpool survive by the skin of their teeth? Um, like like Jonas said, of course, the, the penalty is a little bit soft. Yeah. Uh, but what I appreciate with this Liverpool team is the, is the ability to grind out results even in the most uh, difficult circumstances. And this was another scenario. Uh, right. Liverpool just knows how to get a result. It doesn't matter <laughs> if, it's a, if it's a very cold night in Stoke or... Some night in, uh, in Barcelona, they just get the job done. And I think with yeah. with any team that is vying for the title, uh, with any team with, uh, for any team with the title ambitions, you just need that extra that extra quality in the final third um, yeah. to kind of grind out the results. So yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool is consistent, and I see them yeah. going all the way. Of course, I think it's going to be a two-horse race until the, the end of the season. Uh, yeah, there won't be any surprises there. Great. Akram, do you see Liverpool? I know we have spoken about this countless times. Uh, you know, we're all looking forward. I mean, opposition fans, that is. I'm looking forward to seeing how Liverpool will cope without these guys when the African Cup of Nations kicks off uh, towards, you know, uh, the beginning of the, new, the year in January. Um, and that time is drawing closer. It's actually weeks away. So Liverpool need to milk Salah and money as much as they can. And um, I, John, I'm not too sure if Jota was injured. Did he did he walk off injured or he's? Uh, oh, no. I thought I saw. He's fine. He's fine. Okay, great. So at least that's that's a relief if uh, Jota, Firmino, and Origi will manage to hold fort uh, for that time. But but but. Right. There's another issue that is creeping up as we, you know, on the Liverpool end, Mo Salah not yet signed his contract. Um, his time is, is going up. He's, I think he'll have one year left uh, next season. And uh, Akram, do you think they can hold on to Salah? Because he's, he's obviously the best player in the league at the moment. 
and uh, that looks like it's going to uh, he's going to catch fire. Do you think uh, rumors of Barcelona being interested in him? But do you think that uh, something is brewing under there? Salah might be looking to give one final solid season for Liverpool and then say his goodbyes, uh, much to Jonas' uh, despair. But not Barcelona. I don't see him going to Barcelona. Barcelona is actually oh, coming Barcelona. our way. The Arsenal way. <laughs> they can't bully, they can't bully the money, teams. Man. They don't even have the money. However, I think I think Salah, I think Salah is the best player in the world currently. Honestly, mm. I really think he's the best player in the world currently. And I feel mm. like he deserves he deserves those mega contracts. He deserves those 500k per week contract 480 and I think Liverpool should yeah, offer yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Akram, just 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 hold on right there. The reason mm. I've asked you that question is because mm. Aubameyang was in similar form before he got that mega contract. So True. tell me, the, 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 the difference here, the, the, yeah. the difference here is Aubameyang got that contract and had a Teta on the bench. That's that's mm. the difference. So now Salah is getting this contract and he has Klopp, the coach that has brought the best out of him. So and I feel I feel Salah has done everything to get that contract at Liverpool. And mm. I, from the word go, when I told you, I think he's the best player in the world right now. If Liverpool really can't see that he's worth 400, 400 or 450 a week salary, maybe it's high time they let him go and let clubs like Madrid and maybe PSG or Man City give him what he wants. Because this is a player who has come in a club that had a 30-year uh, league title doubt and, and they have won it and they are even likely to win a second one this year. They have won a mm. Champions League, which they are even likely to win again this year. They are favourites, I think. And Salah is just sensational to watch. Trust me, like I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan, but I enjoy watching Salah. Honestly, the only reason I watch Liverpool games is because of Salah. The man is so yeah. brilliant. The man can assist. The man can score goals. The man has moments of magic almost every game. And mm. I would really be disappointed if Liverpool lets Salah go after his contract has expired. Yeah, man. Um, uh, you know, we will all be disappointed to see him leave. Uh, but I do know that. Um, I, I think he will He will sign a new contract. It's just a matter I of think so. uh, agreeing with him. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of agreeing. He's, he's also approaching 30, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. He's 29 years old. So he's looking he for his last new year. contract. Yeah, he yeah. turns 30 next year, Ian. You're right. So he's looking for... You can't blame the man. He's looking for his last big contract, three-year contract. Exactly. Yeah, go build a few, uh, you know, uh, villas in, in Egypt and things like that. And mm. uh, I'm, I, I'm sure he, he'll be good money. Uh, you can't say the same for uh, Aubameyang and Ozil. Um, so they need to cash him. Uh, speaking of cashing him, the money bags, Manchester City, also had a one year result there. Penalty again. This time, Raheem Sterling doing the damage in the 66th minute against a very physical Wolves team that had lost Raul Jimenez in the first half um, to a red card. Uh, but, you know, speaking of consistency, Akram, you mentioned Liverpool are very consistent and uh, Jonah knows that all too well. Mr. Ian, what are you saying about your noisy neighbours? In terms of consistency, <laughs> they are also setting a benchmark um, right there. Um, you know, rolling on with the win. Can these guys be stopped? One nil win to um, uh, to Manchester City. What was your take on that game? Uh, well, I didn't watch the game. I just uh, watched the highlights. And to be honest, right. I'm disturbed. I'm totally disturbed by Guardiola's <laughs> consistency. Like, for how long will this guy run the show in, in the Premier League? Mm. Uh, but of course... Um, uh, everything is clear. The team is well oiled. They, uh, they have they have strength in depth. Uh, when when Sterling is out, you have Gabriel Jesus coming in, you know, to deliver. They have goals all over the pitch. You have Gundogan. You have uh, I don't know. Literally, everyone can get a goal in, in the in that in that team. So mm. it's just a matter of I, I don't know of when they can be stopped. Uh, the good thing, the Premier League is as unpredictable as ever. So you always expect mm. uh, one team to kind of stop them in their ranks. 
so uh, it ought to be very forthright for them. So I, I expect some few setbacks for them, and and I still feel Liverpool will push them, will push them to the line. Yeah. Right. Right. Not Manchester United. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be that optimistic. I wouldn't be that optimistic. But I hope. I hope we can uh, we can squeeze in a, a top three position. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Jonah, your take on uh, on Manchester City? It looks like we are all relying on Liverpool to stop these guys. Ah man, you know, I watched the <clears throat> I, wa- I watched the Wolves game very specifically because we had struggled with them the weekend before, mm. and I think uh, there's a certain area where we and City struggle a lot against teams that say us we are sitting deep. This is what we are doing. Yeah. We don't care. And we struggled against Wolves and pulled one out of the bag in the last minute. And I thought, because City, one thing you notice about them this season, they aren't necessarily mm. washing teams 4-5. Mm. They do it once in a while, but they're doing like 2-1, 2-0, 1-0. Yeah. Yeah. They aren't really... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they aren't Accra, really man. Them. Nice one. Yeah. I thought like, against Wolves, who, who have shown that they, they're really very solid defensively, I thought they would have gone 0-0. When uh, Jimenez got the red card, I was like, okay, now it's over. But even still, they stayed organized and uh, mm. till the penalty. But other than that, I think if, if City are to falter along the way, it will be because mm. as much as Ian said, anyone on the pitch can score, and this is a team where Kevin De Bruyne hasn't even, has barely played this season. Mm-hmm. But not missing him. I wouldn't say they're missing him. Maybe they're yeah, missing Anna Guerrero. Yeah. But if yeah, they're to this season, it's going to be Go their lack of gold. Mm. Well, Akram, do you think Manchester City can continue to survive without a striker? Mm. Uh, especially I, in the I Champions think... League. Let me just mention, we saw what they did to PSG in the, in the Champions League just a few days ago. Uh, you know, mid last week. So, I mean, this team deserves respect. Um, you know, so do you think? But do you think they can go all the way? We know they are. They are probably giving the Premier League a good run, but we know that Guardiola's eyes light up for the Champions, the Champions League. League. And, yeah, exactly. I, I think uh, the weekend's game was a robbery. First of all, like, <laughs> that wasn't a penalty. That wasn't a penalty. In, in how many years, even before the current rules, the ball hit the man's armpits. It wasn't a penalty. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I feel like uh, they really struggled against a Wolves team that had 10 men. The man got the red card mm. away in how many minutes and they couldn't even score for all those minutes. Mm. And I feel like the, the, the striker issue will catch up on them at some point. Mm. They will mm. feel it at some point. And uh, Hopefully, by the time it catches up on them, Liverpool wouldn't have, you know, driven off. Mm. And I, I also have a theory oh. that they are concentrating more on the Champions League this year. Mm. Especially mm. now, after the last 16 draw, I think he's going to concentrate more on seeing that he wins the Champions League. So he wouldn't right. mind losing the Premier League to a good Liverpool side. But mm. if he can clutch, if he can clutch on a few wins in the in the Premier League, probably he will take them and, you know, but I don't see him. I, I think he's betting on having uh, De Brani, De Brani to resurrect in the second half of the season, mm. which he can. Yeah, but uh, I really think the league title is in favour of Liverpool by a few, mm. like 60 to, 40, 60 to 40 between Liverpool and City. I thought Chelsea yeah. would be a strong team, but uh, I was terribly disappointed. I think it's between Liverpool and Chelsea. And, well, speaking and of Chelsea, yeah, 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 yeah. The the top, the you know, the the, the top three, uh, as they call them. Um, speaking of Chelsea, they they too uh, managed to get um, a narrow victory. Uh, they did score more goals, so three two against Leeds at Stamford Bridge, but two penalties in there, and of course their penalty master, Jorginho, coming in to. Uh, you know, to, to 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 deliver on the penalties, he he very rarely misses, and Mason Mount getting the other goal, uh, right there. But controversial game, 
uh, in there. Leeds fan, Leeds players not happy with some of the decision making in that game. Um, you know, they they did falter last. Uh, I think it was last week when they lost against West Ham, uh, but coming back in this game uh, quite strongly. Ian, do you think Chelsea can push Manchester City mm-hmm. and Liverpool all the way? Because they're starting, we're starting to see chinks in the armor. Yeah, I think. Chelsea is a very strong candidate for the title, but it will, it will remain to be seen how they can cope with injury. Mm. Um, I still believe, uh, especially in the, in the defensive department, I still believe they are they're light. They are right. light uh, when Thiago Silva is out or if Ruri is out, uh, who comes in? And those, those, are some of the, those are some of the challenges, especially if they're willing to go you know, all the way till, uh, till the end of the season. And uh, I think also output, especially uh, with, their, with their striking, Lukaku, to be honest, I was very disappointed. I thought he was going to set the, the Premier League alight. Mm. But it's been disappointing. He has failed to, to catch a break with his fitness. And he's looking uh, lethargic in front of goals, looking out of sorts, to be honest. So, Except against Arsenal. Yes, yeah, so I think <laughs> Tuhel can, can actually sort out the Lukaku um, challenge. Uh, I think they can they can push. They can push. Mm. Yeah, but uh, their personnel, the their personnel is light, to be honest. Yeah, I, I you know, just before pulling in the other guys, I, I personally think and I called it out uh, a few weeks ago that the, the the area where they will struggle uh, with injuries uh, to maintain their momentum is in the center of midfield. So they've mm. lost Kovacic and mm. N'Golo Kante. And those guys, uh, you know, Kovacic, just before he got injured, was actually on, on quite the bit of form in there. Kante, we saw that when he came back, he was on fire. You know, I mean, he wins the ball, goes on, makes driving runs, you know, just he's just uh, quite pivotal to the transition of play from uh, defense to attack. So we, for me, uh, those are two guys who are really um, missing from 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 Chelsea. But I do agree with you; they will suffer in the center of defense if they get injuries to uh, their pivotal defenders. So I don't know, uh, Jonah. Do you think Chelsea can maintain uh, the momentum and uh, pressure on Liverpool and, and uh, City? Before I answer that, I first want to say, hey, Akram, Arsenal doesn't need haters. They have you. You're enough. <laughs> <laughs> the Arsenal fan, yes. There's no one who hates Arsenal like you, Akram. I've feared you now. No, no, no. He doesn't hate Arsenal. He, 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 I think he dislikes Ateta um, oh. and his methods. <laughs> He's Ateta he out. Mm. Yeah, so uh, Matthew, to answer you uh, yeah. Honestly, I think we're going to have a very decisional period between now December and uh, Jan when there's AFCON. Because remember, in AFCON, yeah. as much as we are losing Salah and Mane, and if I'm being honest, it's mostly Salah. Mane hasn't been really himself in the last two years. Uh, yeah. Chelsea are losing Mendy as well, yeah. who is yeah. very pivotal for them. Very there's some games where they've survived this season just because of him and you bring in um, um, who is the coach the coach player Kepa Kepa <laughs> is a very shaky guy hey. he's a very shaky guy then also something that Ian mentioned there Chelsea have been grinding out results which is something that champions do mm. but they've been very reliable on defenders scoring Rudiger mm. Thiago Silva Chilwell Alonso and of course Rich James. James. Rich James, I think, is their top scorer, even maybe now tied with right. Mason Mount. I'm not sure. But if you're, yeah, if you're depending well. on, a, on a wing back carrying you on goals throughout the season and you want to win the league, it's not practical. It's just not practical. Mm-hmm. Lukaku was supposed to be that guy. Timo Vana was supposed to be that guy before. Kai Havertz should also be pulling in some goals, but they're not. But we're going to see in this very congested period of uh, December and January. We're going to really see whoever comes out between Chelsea, Liverpool, and Man City. We will know by then who are the ones chasing the title. 
Yeah, and actually, it's not February in there as well, because I think I think up ends um, at the end of the first week of February. So I'd say by the end yeah. of Feb, um, whoever is on who's on, whoever is on top or whoever the top two are the ones going to take it to the wire. The third guy, I think, will will, will sort of uh, drop well, out. But uh, yeah, of course, Chelsea, uh, like you say. Um, I do agree with you. A shadow of, of, of what we expect from an in an attacking point of view, um, Lukaku's fitness is just not there yet. Um, so it's going to be quite tight. Uh, they also kicked off with Kai Havertz in, in, in striking. So you can imagine Timo Werner started, but we all know whenever he shoots, his, his, his foot is facing uh, probably back home in Germany because I don't know where those balls... They never go towards the goalpost. Always being skydive. Akram, do you think Chelsea, um, you know, let's say they get Lukaku back, let's say they get Kovacic, Kante, unfortunately, Chilwell is out for the season. He did his ACL. Um, but do but you think they, he will be able to, to Thomas Tuchel will be able to uh, mount a more, um, you know, confidence-boosting challenge for the, for the, for the Premier League? I think, I think Chelsea is a strong team. They must have mm. been the title favourites at the beginning of the season and right. I think their title hopes are entirely going to depend on how Liverpool is going to cope up with the absence of Salah and Mane. Mm-hmm. So that's why mm-hmm. I think the next two months are going to be very vital to who is going to win the league. Um, mm-hmm. Lukaku, many people will will disclose their disappointment in Lukaku but that's Lukaku for you. Like It's not the first right. time you're seeing Lukaku in Manchester United, Lukaku in Chelsea in the first season. Lukaku always gives you that hope and somehow blows it up. Like Olivia Giroud. He's, he's, he's that kind of player. Well, you can to <laughs> Let me tell you, yeah, honestly, yeah. Lukaku, Lukaku is slightly, slightly better than Olivia Giroud. But they are mm. same caliber. Trust me, mm. they will score goals and they will miss or they will fail. They will go on a goal drought when you actually need them to score. Now look at mm. look at defenders scoring. Lukaku could even come this week and score two goals, and then when Liverpool loses a game, he will have like four five uh, droughts of of a, of a goal. That's Lukaku for you. But however, I feel like the absence of Kovacic and Golo Kante, like you say, it has affected Chelsea, and mm. it could continue affecting them even in the next few games that they're going to play. Like mm. right now, if you are an Arsenal fan and <laughs> And uh, the gentleman says, I'm, a, I'm an Arsenal head. I actually like Arsenal. I just don't like the idea of Arteta and his process. <laughs> I'm not convinced. So, But uh, as an Arsenal fan, if you ask me among among the five, the four or five top teams to, to, to choose which one to face every week, I would, I, would, I would ask for Chelsea. Honestly, they are good, but it's a team that I know on a good day you can beat. On a good mm. day, you can beat. I know now Man United and Arsenal, that's a big old school derby. And I know they, they always beat us except the past few seasons where we were punishing them. Now for Man City right. and Liverpool, those ones, those ones can beat us five and six for ten consecutive games. Those ones mm. are pretty sure. Now for Chelsea, I know it's a team that is so inconsistent, especially when they're playing top teams. Right. You don't oh. Chelsea will lose oh. against Arsenal when you don't expect them to lose. They will come yes. and lose against West Ham. The other week, you saw it coming yeah. two goal, a, a goal behind to be beaten 3 2. That is Chelsea. Yeah. And, and they can have a string of such results every season. They, like, you could find, like, in the January window where the sellers and money are going for half court, Chelsea could blow up three or four games. And by, by the time Salah and money comes back, they are eight, nine points below the, the, the top team. So for me, I think the next two months are really vital. And how Liverpool copes up with the absence of those players will determine whether Chelsea is in this league title or not. Right. And, uh, of course, let's not forget the boys in light blue, the citizens that they're called, um, <clears throat> Man City as well in the thick of things. So it looks like the title, Jonah, there's some consensus that uh, the title is going to be decided on how Liverpool cope without uh, Salah especially. Uh, in that uh, January, I, don't, February I don't know period. how true this is, Matthew, but I saw somewhere that uh, uh. Salah and Mane, if either team reaches the final of AFCON, that they're only going to miss uh. two Premier League games and one FA Cup game. 
Mm. They're probably mm. in that many games. Just two games. Crystal Palace and I think Southampton. Yeah, but we're looking forward to a hamstring no, injury. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> the hamstring injury to Mo Salah, that. you know. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, no, no. Of course, we don't wish the players back. Mm. The risk of injury is, is, is great, especially playing on those potato pitches back in... Uh, yeah. I hope the pitches, you know, the quality, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Potato fields back home uh, money might not be... Yeah, in the those ends. You might get excited with being back home. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Ateta should send Obama and to slash, the, the, you know, to that those pitches. Uh, in preparation for AFCON as part of his punishment. But anyway, let's let's let I mean of course we wish all the players well we don't you know by the way by know. the way one thing eh mm. Obamiang is going for AFCON eh and you're going to see how Arsenal is really going to miss him. You tell me boss Obamiang Pate Pepe can live for all I care <laughs> and uh, you know we can even bring in Anthony Martial uh, one matter uh, and 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 they will do better than these guys are doing right now. For me, they they're just playing poorly. The young boys are in charge. Gentlemen, we'll have to wrap up the review for the, for now. And of course, you know, if you've just been, if you've just joined the show, you've come towards the back end. But of course, you do have the benefit of playback. So feel free to catch up with the show. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Uh, 